Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426 and today we have the review of the Premium Bandai Exclusive HGUC by Ireland Custom 02 or Unit 2. Now this is what the by Ireland Custom was supposed to be. The one we saw in the OVA slash anime was like a prototype version. So technically they're, okay, in, I'm not sure in the anime but in the manga version there's technically three of these, on, there's three by Ireland Customs in the Torrington base. Uh, as far as I know, or, or I might have misread, misread on the Gundam Wiki, but um, the Zero Two or Unit Two was at Torrington Base, but when the attack started, it had a booting up er error, so or, or like a system error went, so it was not able to launch out right away. Uh, but later, of course, if you read the Gundam Wiki, they mentioned that they it does later, you know, reboot properly and then goes into action. So I wouldn't say this is the like in the anime or exists in the anime but basically the manga version ha um, this is seen in the manga version okay for now this review is going to be different because a long time ago i made a hguc byron custom review so the article I'm, I'm not going to check the articulations on this kit too much because the base articulation is almost the same i'm going to basically show the differences uh, from the normal base kit now I want to point out some some interesting stuff of this kit. Um, if, um, this one has gets its own instruction manual, unlike most premium Bandai kits or the old ones where you would get the uh, instruction manual for the base normal release version of the kit with the additional piece of paper telling you the different build. Also, the stickers are pretty much the same, but I didn't use all of them because some of them are really annoying to put on. Okay, so anything else what you get is, of course, the Byron Custom Unit 2. And unlike the normal version, you get two options. You, you can go for a decal for a EFF or Earth, Earth Federation Force, or you can go with the EFSF, the one I use for the Earth Federation Space Force. Uh, beyond that, this one actually has hands on it. So you have a closed fist hands and uh, open hands. So you don't really get the multi-purpose hands for additional holding weapons, which is kind of a shame, but at the same time, every built weapon is built in here, so not much of a big deal. You also get this connector for a action base, because this one does not have a action base uh, connecting hole on the bottom. And you get these two pieces. Uh, technically, you get two sets of these. Now, what this is, is that even in the instruction manual, if you happen to own a high-grade universal sentry got plant, you can connect its uh, booster unit to this kit when it, uh, on the transformation mode, not on this mode. So this is the middle section part to connect that part. And also, just those who are wondering, you do get all the pieces for making the normal Byron Custom. So that's a pretty good, um, you know, deal. Now, I don't have the god plant, I don't even own the god plant, so I'm not going to show this part. That's hence I didn't even cut it off from the, from the plate. And also, I guess those who are watching might be ex expecting to see the, the normal Byron Custom on, on its side. Now, this one's, this was one of my first High Green Universal Century kits that got me into High Green Universal Century because back then I only cared about Master Grades. Once again, you can see some color difference, this one being a more darker version. Also, those who are wondering, there is another version of this, um, a more light blue color. There's two versions, so you, you can just go for any of your taste because it's the same kit with different colors. Um, there's a color differentiation, but beyond that, there's a lot of the same parts, like besides the arm and the feet and the backpack equipment. But the, the main connector for the equipment are the same. And this one has less decals, well, as I believe this had more decals with it. And the pipe uh, color connectors are, the color of the pipes are different, uh, while as this one doesn't have much pipes on the arm itself. Okay, now I will get into the review for like in more details. So, one of the main different features is that this one actually has arms with hands instead of a claw arm. Instead of a mega particle cannon, you get these long barrel beam uh, beam rifles and you get these beam cannons on the backpack. 
Now, I saw these were a little bit shorter, but they're really longer than I thought. And according to Gundam Wiki, these are the same type of, not the same pieces. I'm not sure if it's the same pieces as the HGUC Gap Plans uh, cannon arms, but these are the same type of cannons uh, used by the God Plant. So yeah, uh, long. So being differences on the equipment instead of claw hands, and you have a actual manipul manipulator, and also uh, the backpack. Some may say, hey, doesn't this make it slower? No, this has also thrusters built into it on the cannons. Uh, another different part would be the feet. While as the Byron Custom would have these claw-like feet. This one has like a normal, um, the back the back of the feet are different. While this one has these parts, uh, the Byron Custom has these. I'm not going to show where what part is the sticker because um, this one is sticker heavy and I already mentioned it. I think I mentioned this in my uh, Byron Custom review. So you can go check that out. I'll leave a link below. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show like now the backpack. Well, not much of a backpack now. These cannons are, do have some articulation where, of course, everything is connected through a peg. Just letting you guys know. So you have these middle section connectors. You can move them around as much as you can. Um, so they're double pegs and joints in a way. The arms now because of these weapons. Um, they are kind of difficult to pose because the long barrels actually hinders the boosters on the on the side parts. Okay, uh, one thing I was not expecting about these weapons is that I was expecting a swivel system or like a polycap peg system where you would be able to like turn these like that. But no, you just you take off the shield. These are called the air arrow shields. Uh, you take it off and these things are not really pegged in they're just oh boy these are just just like in there they're just in there like that they're not really clipped in there's no peg inside it's just just in there you take it out and then re and then on the front of the on the forearm part you have these holes and you just need to reattach it like this okay And the connection is very stiff. And after you're done with that, you just need to reconnect the shield, which is that you have these two pegs, there's these two holes, reconnect. Same goes for the other arm, nothing too special. And if there's one complaint I have to say is that now these long barrel beam, uh, beam rifles, they are also capable of making a beam saber weapon. Uh, a long beam saber, similar to the Byron Custom, where um, the barrel where it fire, fires it, its mega particle cannon is capable of making a beam saber. This is also capable of doing that. However, they do not give you any beam saber effects for that, and these do not fit any beam saber effects like the com the common ones you get. This is like from the HGUC GM2. Does not fit. I even tried the one from the Byron Custom. Does not fit. So. Kind of a, sh a sad part. Okay, uh, beyond that, once I mentioned, the main base of the kit is is identical with a few minor color differences and sticker differences, yada yada. Now, there, believe it or not, there is a transformation for this kit, and it's kind of awkward. And I'm not even sure how to pose the transform version of it. But... I'll try to do this as best as I can. First, of course, you gotta, you know, re you have to put these cans uh, uh, attached to the arms. I think, it, yeah. Um, Balance-wise, it's almost the same way. It's ha it almost has the same balance uh, of the normal release by own custom, but depending on how you pose it, might be tricky. Okay, first you attach these two cans, and I really love how these cannons look on the arm. Of course, because of these small hands, it does feel awkward time to time. Okay, for now, I'm going to take off these hands because you need to reattach the open hands later. Okay, once that's over, you need to fold the cans on the backpack a little bit, you know, back so you can make some space. 
and then you twist the arm 90 upwards like that each arm and the side boosters has to remain the way how they look like so like that you, you do that now sorry for the inconvenience but yeah it's kind of difficult to do even if I do put it on the action base it does not really hold that well now you have to you have to take off the shield one more time I forgot to, I forgot to do that and then okay you, you have to twist the arm one more time so it goes the opposite direction like that so you can twist it like that same goes for the other arm you twist another 180 degrees and then twist it like that so the barrels are forming in the middle section and then heading out front and while you're at it they have you have these handles of the beam rifles you pop them out or pull them out or turn them out I'm not sure what the best term would be and then you reap and then this is where the open hand comes in you know I wouldn't mind if they gave us like trigger fingers but oh well you have to attach these hands to that part so it has that illusion of well, like holding that um, handle like that so it has to go through the sum still now this is not the best review I ever done because this is one of my first cases where I have the normal release version and then making a review of the premium Bandai version come on okay there we go Yeah, it's kind of difficult to pose these, and then you're almost done. Once you get them in position, you line them up, and then they have these two. If you look at carefully, they they have these two holes on the beam rifles itself. These two holes. What you need to do is reattach uh, on the shield. They have these pegs on the end side. You just need to attach these two. Oh, come on. Hate dropping pieces. Attach those two to that part. So uh, you have to line them up properly. And there you go. Same goes for you have another one, you have to do that on the down section. And this pretty much locks everything into place. Well, only the arm sections, I guess like that and then there's one more piece that you need to connect if you see the arms they have these holes going on you have these holes now and if you see the cannon they have these peg oh come on if you see the cannon they have these pegs here you need to connect this peg to that arm which is not too e which is not really that easy I tried and it's really difficult to do I think it's mostly the the angle it does not make sense you push it down I, I kind of force pushed it and then the barrel is looking in a totally different uh, angle like that so I don't know it, it's maybe I could be doing something wrong but I just usually just push them down like that and then try to match up the l angles of the barrels like that and then this is where a, you need to have a gigantic action base and then there should be like a piece that you can connect the Gaplant booster to the back side here so if you actually do have that booster and attach it the best way to say that it it's sort of in a motorcycle stand so yeah um, at this point it's kind of difficult to balance now this is not exactly a wave rider this is mostly for more speed this is like a speed mode a like aero mode so not the best transformation and it does look funky if you look at this angle once again this was a was this was the review of the premium Bandai exclusive HGUC Byron and custom unit 02 now this review was not too special it was kind of messy which I do admit uh, because I already reviewed the normal version of the Byron Custom. If you're pretty much satisfied with the Byron Custom, this is not really a necessity. This is what the Byron Custom was supposed to 
B instead of, uh, instead of the one we saw. So the one we have actually is like the prototype version. And for me, this was like a very interesting concept to see a completed version of a mobile suit as a premium Bandai kit. So that's why I went for it. So I, I'm not going to recommend this to anybody. Well, not that because it's a bad kit, but it's just like one of those kits that um, it's really up to you. I wouldn't say this is like the best premium Bandai kit or even the best kit I ever I have ever built. But those who are interested in this kit, it's kind of worth getting. I mean, the build is fun. It takes quite a lot. It does quite take some time, and then it does have a lot of stickers than you think. So that's one downside. And I wish it did come with the beam saver effects. But beyond that, it's a pretty good kit to get if you wish to do so. But not I wouldn't like strongly recommend because it's really up to you. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching the review. If you have any questions or requests, leave a comment below. If I got anything wrong, leave a comment below. If you found my review interesting or informative, please like my videos and also subscribe to my channel. I still have more kits to buy and build, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.